kao, would you like me to do it or? Uh, please do this, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so this is our last seminar this semester and uh, we've been quite successful. We, we had a number of talks and this is the last talk for the spring 2022. And our speaker today is Dr. Tan Cal from SUNY Korea. He's gonna to talk to us about optimal control of the sweeping process and its application to the crowd model, uh, crowd motion models, excuse me. So uh, Dr. Kao, please. Okay, thank you very much for the organizers uh, for inviting me to give a talk here. This is the, the joint work with my postdoc scholar and my undergraduate students in SUNY Korea, the extended global campus of Stony Brook University and uh, United States. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. So first, we will introduce uh, about the motor swing process and consider the optimal control of non-convex swing process. Then we'll talk about the applications of swing process, and uh, especially to the the ground motion models. Then finally, I will uh, discuss a bit about uh, the future research. All right, so let's get started with uh, the motor swing process. And the, the, the process was introduced by John Jack Morrow in the 1970s in their differential inclusion form here. And you can see this uh, extra dot, it just stands for the velocity of the object. And here we consider uh, an object XT and inside, you know, the, the moving set or the sweeping set. And uh, N of XT, CT stands for the, uh, stand for the not more gone in the sense of convex analysis. It's just the collections of the vectors that uh, points outward to the set at, at X on the boundary, okay? And C here is just a convex set, right? Mm. And uh, this process is used to model, you know, the motion of uh, the object um, uh, XT here, depending on the movement of uh, the moving set here. Uh, so I will show you this one. Right, depending on the motion of the moving set, so the ball or the object just stay where it is. In case it is not hit by the ring here, otherwise it is swept, you know, towards the interior of the ring. So you can see the it is the the normal the normal um, vectors uh, when X stays on the boundary, we point outward to the set here. So uh, roughly speaking. You can see the direction of the velocity and the normal vectors, somehow they have the opposite directions, right? So that's why you can take a look at the differential inclusion where negative x dot here, okay, belongs to the normal cone here. And in case x stays in the interior of the, the x, the uh, ct, then uh, normal cone is zero, right? So that is just the object doesn't move at all, right? So it's moved uh, when it was hit by the boundary of the you know, the, the, the swimming set, okay? And um, to ensure the uniqueness, uh, I'm sorry, the existence and the uniqueness of uh, the solutions, then uh, uh, the moving set must move in the absolutely continuous way. Use the catching algorithm by constructing uh, like a sequence, okay? Say maybe um, X and I here, uh, and he considered the partition of uh, the time interval zero t here. And uh, starting from x zero, we construct the sequence x i and uh, x i plus one is just the projection of x i and onto the set c of t i plus one, something like that. So that's why somehow we catch up, right? So this is the name of the algorithm catching up algorithm. And he can argue that uh, this sequence will converge to the solution of the of the process. Okay, and this swimming process uh, has many applications in elasticity, quantum statics, mechanics, uh, hysteristic systems, traffic, equilibria, social and economic uh, modeling, et cetera. And if you want to know more about, you know, swimming process, so I refer you to this, uh, uh, the reference. Okay, and um, Okay, now uh, in the research, we consider a better version of the process. Um, so we just add, you know, the perturbation to the right hand side of the, the differential, uh, you know, inclusion. And, you know, somehow, some, sometimes that's the convexity assumption of the moving sets is too strong. 
uh, especially when we try to describe the motion of the movement of some participants or the agents in the ground motion. Um, then, the, you know, somehow we try to weaken the convexity assumption of the moving set here. All right, and we uh, we have a new concepts like the like the prox regular. Okay, it's just a weakened version of uh, uh, the uh, the convexity. And uh, so, how can we obtain the existence and the uniqueness of the solution of the Bertrupsian process here? So, uh, to, as I as I mentioned before, that uh, the moving set must you know move in the absolutely continuous way in this sense, so we can find some absolutely continuous function certified this inequality. And uh, the perturbation must be Lipschitz continuous and certifies the curve condition like this. Okay, and um, in this paper, uh, Edmund and Thiebaud just obtain the existence and the uniqueness of a solution of the perturbation process. Okay, and um, here is just, uh, so this talk is just the applications of, um, this problem, the optimal control of a non-convex spin process, I, uh, I, I consider this problem in in the paper with my advisor uh, Boris Monokovic, uh, the optimal control of non-convex spin process published in the JDA. So, in here we consider the Bolza type functional, minimize the cost function, the running cost and the terminal cost here. So over the control function in UNA, in here we consider the control in the, in the perturbation and uh, the moving set here. Somehow we translate uh, the moving set and CI is, 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 is fixed, right? And it is described by, sorry, by the C2 convex, C2 convex smooth uh, function, right? And you can see the C is here, is this not, is this not convex for sure. And, um, and we have a state constraint, all right, and, so there are some challenging issues in this uh, problem here. So, so the first one is uh, the velocity mapping. I mean, you can see there's the normal gone and the perturbations here. So normal gone is just not continuous, all right? And uh, it is unbounded, all right? And moreover, we have some state constraint like this one. So to overcome such issue is we develop the method of the discrete approximations and together with the advanced tools of generalized differentiation in order to derive the necessary condition to solve the problem, okay? So the key point is we need to uh, design or construct some discrete problem, say PK, which approximates, you know, the original problem, right? So that is uh, maybe uh, the discrete problem can be treated as a mathematical programming uh, with the geometry constraint, equality constraint, inequality constraints. And then we try to derive the nexus of condition for this grid problem. And then we pass those conditions to the limit in order to derive the nexus of conditions for the original problem. But the point is we try, so we need to design in a good way such that the optimal solutions of the discrete problems would converge to Now here, I, I will not uh, present the, those results in here because we don't have much time for that. All right, now let's talk about the general light differentiations uh, that we use to derive the nexus of conditions. So we have uh, the, the limiting normal cone or Modukovic normal cone, which is defined in this sense, all right? And the subdifferential of a lower semi continuous function, phi is defined in terms of the normal cone like this. And when um, phi is a smooth function, then this one reduces to the, uh, the gradient. And the core derivative of the set value mapping is defined in terms of normal cone as well, and is defined by this way. And when the when capital F is single value mapping and smooth single value mapping, then the core derivative is uh, reduces to just uh, a joy Jacobian matrix. And, and we also have uh, the second order, uh, subdifferential of phi x is defined just to core derivative of subdifferential phi, yeah, of x bar of v bar like this when all of them enjoy the full calculus and can be completely calculated in terms of the given data of, of p. And uh, next one is uh, we introduce the concept of the prox normal cone. Uh, as I um, 
I mentioned before, uh, sometimes as we need to weaken the convexity assumption of the moving set, right? So we need to, um, in, in such a case, then we need to uh, um, find an appropriate normal gone, right? Instead of uh, the, 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 um, the normal gone in the sense of uh, the convex analysis. So we introduce this one, the, the new definitions, the, the proximal normal gone uh, like this one. Uh, and, it, and omega x, so it is defined like it's just the collections of uh, C such that we can find some alpha such that, you know, X belongs to the projections of, of X plus alpha C to, uh, to omega. So, so geometry, geometry uh, speaking, so you can uh, roll, you can draw the, the circle here, you see, and this, this one, it just intersect, you know, the, the, the set here at only one point on the, on the, uh, you know, on on the boundary here, and you can see that the normal, the proximal normal cone at the point y is zero here, because of the definitions, right? But for the limiting normal cone that we uh, that is defined before is different than at this point. That so the normal cone, uh, the limiting normal cone is kind of uh, broader. So you can see L L and L Y at uh, uh, omega is is different. And when uh, the moving set C is uh, is proximal color, which is defined later, then you know they're both the limiting uh, and the proximal normal cones will coincide. Okay, and that is the, the definition of the the eta proximal color set. So omega is uh, is said to be the eta proximal color if for all x on the boundary and for the unit vectors v. That is a prox regular uh, unit vectors, uh, and we have that uh, you know the ball uh, center at x plus eta v and eta here. So the intersection of this ball and the set is empty, all right. Or equivalently, so we 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 have uh, this inequality here, and you can see that uh, when eta goes to infinity, then this one reduces, reduces to the definition of uh, uh, the number going of the, for the convex uh, set. Right, so you can see that the convexity is stronger, right? So you can see that is infinity, yeah. And that is the uh, uh, the figure, and yeah. So eta is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, omega is eta proximal. If any external ball with a radius smaller than eta can be rolled around it here, okay. However, for the second situation, that is not the case here, right? And because there's no intersection in, in this point, so that's why it's just not proximal set. Okay, uh, and let's move on to the the application of scripting process. Here, um, uh, if you are interested in the application in the elliptical circuits, so I will refer you to this, to this book, non smooth modeling and simulation for Swiss circuits. Okay, now, but I just want to focus only the applications to the ground motion models. And actually, I will follow their mathematical framework of Bori and Veno in this paper. That is, we consider um, N participants, uh, which is each of them is identified with the richest disk of maybe different radius. And uh, so the, the point is, we need to simulate the motion of the, you know, the, the, the agents or the, or the participants here. They try to reach in, you know, to the axis while avoiding the obstacles and uh, avoiding overlapping to each other. That's a key point. So uh, actually each of them has two kinds of velocity. We have the spontaneous velocity or desired velocity. That is uh, the velocity is uh, they would like to have in, in, in when uh, uh, in the absence of the others. And when they have, uh, when they see the person ahead so close to them, then they need to adjust the velocity. So the actual velocity and the desired velocity or spontaneous velocity are no longer the same anymore. Okay. And now uh, I will, in, in my problem, we consider, okay, an, an agent, right? And some obstacles and the destinations here. And the goal is we want to find the optimal, um, uh, optimal path of the agent uh, from their starting point to the destinations. So you may think of uh, an agent like a robot or the person that moves along the path. 
uh, and it's always able to look ahead at the distance L here. Okay, so that's why we can identify that uh, the agent as the, the, the disk, the center is denoted by X1, X2, and the radius is L here. Or you may think of that like, during the pandemic here, so people should um, maintain the social distance, right? <laughs> so they stay in this, uh, the, the circle of which uh, the radius uh, LI, something like that. And this is the starting position. The, the destination is here. And this one is, uh, is denote, you know, the, the obstacle, <clears throat> uh, the radius RI, and the time interval is, should, be, should be given. So the point is, though, so how can we uh, describe uh, the admissible configurations? Uh, that is, we require that the agent and the obstacle, they will not um, like overlap, right? And in, in the same sense, uh, the distance between the agent and obstacle is at least at least R plus Ri. Okay, so that's why we defined uh, this set. Dix is non-negative here, and Dix is just the side distance between the agent and the obstacle. And it is our moving set in the super process. Okay, now uh, without the obstacles, so the agent will go to the destination using his her own desired velocity. That is, in this case, desired velocity and the actual velocity are the same, right? And we use uh, ux to denote the desired velocity, okay? And uh, now for simplicity, we will assume that uh, the agent will use the shortest path to reach the destinations. So in, in such a case that so we, can, we can write ux in this following form. So d destinations is the norm of X by the X destination is the distance between the agent and the destinations. So UX is minus S multiplied by the gradient of this function. So this function is just a gradient, right? It's just unit vectors uh, showing their, uh, the, um, showing their uh, um, the directions between the agent and the, the destinations, okay? And uh, you need to take a negative here because you want to because the agent is heading toward the destination. So that's why we need to introduce minus. And S here is just the speed of the agent, okay? So um, I hope that it is uh, the desired velocity description is clear. And um, now when the agent has, um, you know, contact with the obstacle in this sense and dix equals zero, right? So in this case, uh, um, uh, the, the agent must adjust the desired velocity, right? That is the So uh, we need to select uh, the extra velocity in such a way that the agent will not collide with the obstacle. So that's why uh, uh, we, we need to introduce like the set of admissible velocities, say with the capital V of X here. So, when dix equals zero, that is in case there's contact between the agent and the obstacle, then we require that the, the inner product between like the, the gradient of dix and v is non-negative here, okay? And dix just the, the gradient of, uh, of, of this function, okay? It's just the distance between the agent and the obstacle, all right? And so this, this one means that somehow, uh, somehow it means that when the agent has a contact with the obstacle, so there's some feedbacks to stay away from, from the obstacle in order to uh, not to collide with the obstacle, all right? Um, so to see how, how, how this one works, so if you select X dot, okay, in here, so now let's see that uh, we consider the distance of the agent to the obstacle at the, at the time t plus h, right? h is just a small unit time here. If you, if you use the Taylor polynomial for, for di xt here, we expand it around xt. So we have something like this, right? And you can see if we select x dot in here, right? Then the inner product of di, the creator of di xt and x dot here is a non-negative here, right? So this ensures that the distance between x the agent and the obstacle at the time t plus h is always non-negative. In other words, is the distance is, is increasing. So if you select the velocity, the actual velocity in this way, so we can make sure that there's no uh, collision. Okay. Um, 
but uh, there are a lot of options here. So I don't know. So which option is the best, right? So uh, in in the contact uh, situation, um, and as you know, as you can see, this actual and desired velocity are, are no longer the same, right? Uh, but uh, they should not be too much different, okay? And the key point is how can we relate relate them? That is the answer. So we will define the actual velocity as the projection of the desired velocity onto this, the uh, setup admissible velocity like this one, it is the, which is defined by six. Yeah. And, and then you will, sorry, you will use the optical decomposition to just decompose uh, the desired velocity in this way. Right, the projection of uxt onto vxt and uh, the projection of uxt onto the v star. Okay, v star stands for the polar to the admissible velo uh, velocity set vx, uh, which is defined like this. All right, and guess what? So, so the first one is actually x dot here. All right, and plus this guy. And um, in this case, so v star is, uh, you know, it, it, we can verify that v star is just the proximal normal cone of the set C at X here. And so the differential equation here can be written in the form of the sweeping process like this, all right? And you can see that when X stays in the interior of the set, all right, right? then the normal cone is trivial, is a zero. So uh, in such a way, in such a case, that's the X dot and desired velocity, they are identical, right? But when, when we have a contact, right, the normal code is, is activated, right, then velocity, actual velocity and desired velocity is no, no longer the same, but they are related by, by, by eight here. So that's a, a very nice application of the sweeping process to, uh, you know, the ground motion model, okay? Now, in uh, next one, I will, I will consider, uh, just present our current work. Um, so in, in here, we will consider of the following optimal control P like this one. Okay, we minimize this one um, over the control A. So here I, we, uh, I will influence uh, the desired velocity in this way. Okay, desired velocity in this minus S8 multiplied by the gradient of DS, uh, the destination X here. So somehow that I want to um, push the agent to move faster or maybe slow it down, something like that, right? So. To do that, to just involve the control way in this way, and um, uh, the objective, uh, the meaning of, of our objective function is we want to minimize the distance between x, um, the agent, okay, to the destinations, right? Meanwhile, that uh, of course, if you want to reach the destination as soon as possible, then we need to use a lot of energy to to uh, to run right, but here I want this. I want to save energy as well. So I want to get get close to the axis, but I need to save my energy. So that's the meaning of, of the objective function. Okay. And tau is just a trade off between the distance and the energy. Okay. If you care more about the distance or you care more about the energy. Okay. Um, Next one is, uh, I guess one to present is um, some necessary optimal loading conditions for our optimal control problem. Okay, and it is actually, it's just the applications of the necessary conditions that we derive in, uh, uh, in theory uh, for the, uh, the general optimal control of uh, the non-convex whipping process that we uh, published in the JDA paper, okay, and we can, we, so we can find some uh, like dual elements certifying the following conditions here. Uh, I know it's, it looks so complicated, so I will try my best to explain some of them. So you can uh, see that number two somehow shows you the connections between the desired velocity and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the actual velocity. X dot is just the actual velocity, right? And D, dxy is it's just a unit vector, which is defined like this one, right? Showing you the their, um, the position between X and the destinations, right? And the, the second term, okay, is from the normal cone, okay, normal cone. And, um, and then if there's no, no contact with the obstacle, then the second term will vanish, okay? So it is, it's going to be zero. So number three says, yeah, if there's no contact 
right? Then at that of t here equals zero, right? But if there's contact, then we can get some useful information here. That is in the product of qxt and x uh, obstacle minus x dot here equals zero. And this one is very nice. And so we use, we extract useful information from this implication in order to uh, find the optimal control. All right, and and that is uh, p dot equals euler lorentz uh, equation. And we have the transverse allotic condition and we have the non-trivial uh, trivial, trivial allotic condition like this. And uh, those conditions are derived in, the, in this paper, uh, our current paper, application of control swing process to nonlinear uh, ground motion model obstacles published in IEEE control system letters. Okay, now we try to use this one to solve our uh, problems here uh, for, you know, for simplicity. So first of all, we try to consider the case with the one agent and, and one obstacle. And um, we will input the ending times, some initial positions, the obstacle positions, the destination should be given as well. And the speed can be computed. Okay, if you know the initial position, then you can find the speed here. So we just divide the distance by the time here and a constant tau here. So output is just optimal value and the corresponding directory. Okay, and you can see that um, we can call the TF here. It's just the first time the agent is in contact with the obstacle and TL is just the first time the agents will leave the obstacle. And uh, due to the complexity uh, of the problem that we just consider the, uh, the constant control. And and here we observe that uh, A bar here should, should be large enough to support the agent at least to exit the position T XTL here. And then from here, so it can reach to the destinations. So you can see that when uh, the agent missed the obstacle, that it will stay on the boundary, okay? Stay on here, slide on here, then they will, uh, after this one will go to here. So it, in, this, in this way, uh, at the first time contact that, you know, the normal code is activated. Right then, you know, I have to adjust the velocity, right? So desired velocity and, and actual velocity is are no longer the same anymore, right? Then uh, using the information for the non walk on, right? So we push the agent away from the obstacle like this one in order to avoid their, uh, the collision. And and then at, at, at this point, an eta equals, equals zero, okay? Then then now it is safe, so we can, I can reach the destination. Okay, and the desired velocity of the agent is is given by this minus s r s a is s a uh, multiplied by their this is their uh, the gradient vectors it's just a unit vector, and uh, so this uh, somehow this this one this vectors I try to head to the the destinations right and s here at uh, s just the speed. And I need to control the speed by multiply by the control A here. And the actual velocity has the following representations. You see we have at the, uh, uh, so we need to add some, uh, the, this term here, which is produced by the normal cone. So again, if there is no context, right? So before, or after being contact here, then you can see x dot and the extra velocity are the same. Okay, then the, so uh, our objective is we want to minimize the distance between x and the destinations together with uh, the uh, the control effort. So you know to proceed this, we need to compute everything here in terms of uh, the control. So we need to control, I'm sorry, we need to compute the distance between xt and x uh, destination here. And we observe that the distance that the agent travels from TL to capital T is, is calculated by this one. So you subtract the norm x bar TL minus x destination to, you know, by this one. Um, and which can also found by multiplying the, the travel time by the constant speed here. So uh, it follows that 
uh, we have this this one uh, the normal x bar t minus x destination is is here okay and the next step is we need to find x bar tl right x bar tl and the tl that's the the the, the time that the obstacle will leave i'm sorry that the agent will leave the obstacle And to find XTLs, we observe as we can, it's just the intersection of the circle center of this obstacle, right? With the radius L plus R, right? Center, um, we find the intersection of the two circle, one circle center at X obstacle with the radius L plus R and the circle center at one half of, it's just the midpoint of uh, X ops and, uh, and, X, and the X dash here with this radius. Okay, and, and you can see it's easy to see that we have a two possibilities here, two solutions, right? And then you just pick the one with uh, uh, the short, uh, shorter distance, okay? And uh, the next one is, so how can we find X bar T, TF here? So uh, we have TF is found by this one, okay? Just divide the distance by this, uh, the speed here. And to find TL, we can observe that we can calculate, you know, the this distance. It is easy, to, so it is easy to find, right? It's just a, a um, uh, pi theta times r plus l divided by one eighty here. Okay, then you can in in this way, in this case, so we can uh, find that TL in terms of TF. Yeah, and here I just want to say that. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, we can argue that using our nexus reconditions, like the norm of x dot here, okay, is 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 actually the control way. Yeah. And now, uh, I just want to mention that I just want to remind you that we our goal is we try to uh, express everything in terms of the the uh, the control. So uh, the cost function over here in this in this situation is just a quadratic function. Uh, with respect to the control a bar here and we just try to minimize this and it is our algorithm okay we compute x bar tf x bar tl here and we minimize the cost functional uh you know in 14 subjected to 15 here and i just want to show you some uh examples that's we uh that we did so far uh we we wrote the Python code based on the, this algorithm, okay? And, okay, so I, it is the initial position. So X destinations is zero, zero, okay? Is a, I'm sorry, the, the destination is here. And it is the initial position is zero, 048. And the position of the obstacle of zero, 24. The time is six here. And now try to make some simulation. Yeah. yeah. You can see that stay here, and then reach you know the uh, the uh, the destinations. Okay, then yeah, this is the this is the optimal control here. Uh, optimal control, and uh, we just uh, try to calculate the optimal control with different values of tau here. So if we increase tau here, that's you can see that we want to save more energy, right? Then you can see TF is is bigger. Okay, and. So the, I, I want to emphasize that the goal is uh, um, is we need to find the the optimal strategy, right? Um, to reach the destination. So like how at the ending time. So I need to stay close to you know uh, to the uh, destinations with uh, the minimum energy. And there's another example with the this uh, data. So uh, I just want to show you the animations based on our. Uh, our Python code, yeah. you see, and here then we reach the, the agent reaches the, the destinations. So that's, uh, we can solve, um, uh, you know, the crowd control, control ground motion model with a single agent and single obstacle analytically. Okay, and then we can uh, write the code based on our proposed algorithm and solve the problem uh, completely. Um, so, uh, it's just the the table of values of the agent, okay, and with different values of tau here. All right, and I think we can move on to the this one. So I'm, I'm sorry that how much time that I have left. You still have about uh, twenty minutes. Okay, okay, 
Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, next one is I want to talk about uh, the control gram of your models with uh, multiple agents and multiple obstacles. Okay, and here we uh, uh, consider n agents with m obstacles here. And the objective is we want to find some optimal strategy to drive only agent to the desired uh, destination here with the minimum minimum effort during a given time interval here. And this case is uh, so so complicated. Um, now, okay, so uh, uh, we will denote agent I. Identify H and I by the the same thing, right? The, the, the disk with the center X I, and the radius L I, and obstacle K, um, is uh, is here. And we also, but the the admissible configuration is is different. Yeah, and here, uh, we have uh, D I J is non negative here. Okay, D I J is uh, is here. That's uh, we want that the H and I and J here will not overlap, right? Um, and uh, they must be, they must take into account the obstacle as well. We not collide with the obstacle, so that's why that's you know the this, the invisible configuration in this case is, is more more complicated. And the reasons we need to consider we we need to separate them because the um, uh, agent I and J will interact with, with each other when they're in contact. However, it is not the case uh, when we consider the interaction between the Asian and the obstacle because it's just a one-way interaction, right? That is, you know, when when the Asian has a contact with the obstacles, so obstacle doesn't, you know, has no reaction. So that's why we need to separate them. So this, this uh, we will consider the same optimal control problem here. We want to minimize the distance between uh, xt at uh, the destination and and the control uh, effort and in this case uh, uxa is, is is something like this one okay it's a desired velocity of uh, n agents so it is more complicated than you know the, the previous situations with a single agent and x dash here stands for the desired destination that's the agents in, you know m2 and tau is just a trade-off between the distance and the energy. Okay, and here the nexus three conditions for this optimal control problem is is harder. So you can see <laughs> equation number two here, showing the connections between the desired velocity and the actual velocity. Okay, um, and. The first one is just the, I mean, the, the right hand side. Take a look at the right hand side. And the first, the first term is, is just the uh, desired velocity, right? And the, this one and the next one showing somehow the interactions, interactions of uh, you know the agents. So they should take into account of other agents. Make sure that I will not overlap with other guys. So that's why as I I have some complicated terms like this. And meanwhile, I, I need to consider the obstacle as well, whether the obstacle are on my, my way or not. So if uh, if I have, if I can see the obstacle on, on my path here, I need to, uh, you know, avoid them. Yeah, not collide with uh, with the obstacle as well. So that's why it's this, this, this equation is much more complicated than single agent and single obstacle. And we have uh, some implications. And if there's no contact between I and J, then at the IJ equals zero, right? And there's no contact between uh, agent and the obstacles, then uh, at the um, IK obstacle here equals zero. In case there are, con there, there are contact between them, so we can get some, some information here from here. Yeah, and we use them to guide us to find the, uh, the optimal control. Okay, and oh, I'm sorry. All right, and and now uh, I next one I we talk about our uh, some observations that uh, if agent I and J are collinear with the destinations, 
right? And then using some condition four here, yeah, condition four here, uh, we can derive some useful information, yeah, about the uh, interactions between agent I and J here, okay? But this this is this is true when I and J are collinear with the destinations. There's they, that is all of them are staying on the same line. Then we can get something like this. And we as we will assume that lambda is positive, then we can say AI and AJ, SI and HA are related by this one. Okay. And we also assume that uh, after contact, so two agents will remain the same velocity. Okay. Velocity until the end of the process. And uh, in uh, for the second case, when agent I and J are not collinear with the destination, this case is so hard then we are trying to solve it right now, but uh, uh, we just um, uh, proposed two ideas how to uh, proceed with, uh, with this particular uh, case. Um, we can, maybe the first one is uh, two agents will adjust the all velocity to the new identical one and remain uh, it until the end of the process or until having contact with our other agents or the obstacles. Another option is they will adjust the velocity and positions in a way that they are, they, they are collinear with the destinations, that uh, the agents and the destination are on the same line. Um, yeah, we will consider this one as our future research. And because the problem is, is, is so complicated right now, then uh, we try to reduce the complexity by considering the situation in a corridor. Yeah. And we will assume that the destination is on the right side of uh, of the agents, okay, and you can see that uh, this equation, the system of e differential equations, show, showing us the, the the connections, the relationship between the actual velocity and desired velocity in this way, yeah, and okay, and now we try to study the you know the um, uh, the problems with two agents to see what's going on here, and that is the the desired, I'm sorry, it's just desired velocity. In this case, is here. So if there's no contact among the agents, okay, then eta one, two is, is zero. In case they are in contact, then when we equate them so we can find some information about, you know, the effort here, we mean eta one, two, okay? And you can use a Newton Blackett to compute the trajectory in this way, okay? Uh, then, in case they're in contact here, the eta one two here, right, is 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 positive. And actually, using this fact here, so when they're in contact, they will uh, remain uh, will adjust to, to the new velocity. Okay, x dot, x one dot and x two dot they are the same. Okay, and that's why their distance is always constant. It, they will remain this uh, you know the the identical velocity until the end of the process. And using this fact, so we can compute you know, the time, the contact time, and at that one, two here. So at that one, two, a TF one, two can be considered as just the effort, right? Something like that. Then at the lambda one, two is, is computed like this. So the contact time and the interaction effort between two agents will rely on their initial positions then. So we consider some possible cases, uh, like the agents are initially in contact, um, they are in contact from the beginning, right? Or they're out of contact from the beginning or there's no contact at all. If there's no contact, the problem is it's not uh, interesting and there's no sweeping process at all, yeah. And um, now we try to, uh, we try to uh, compute the, um, uh, the cost functional uh, like in three cases in terms of uh, the optimal controls here. And I want to emphasize that the conditions uh, this 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 one is very is very important here. So it is deduced from uh, the necessary conditions. It's very useful and will help us uh, simplify the calculation a lot. And I will show you this one uh, when we have uh, three agents. Okay, and um, yeah, it is uh, the algorithm that we propose based on our uh, the necessary conditions. And the input is. Uh, T, X naught, X destination, L1, L2, uh, and tau. Output is uh, just uh, the optimal control. And, okay, so based on this one, we, uh, 
we wrote a, the Python code. Uh, then we tried to make some simulations. And uh, that is the uh, our data. The destination is here, is zero, zero. And x1, x2 is uh, are given like this. OK, then now I will make some simulations. So you can see that uh, before contact, you know, the guy, which is farther from the axis, okay, is running faster, right? Fast because the farther I, 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 I am to the axis, then, and then I need to run fast. Um, adjust to the new velocity, right? The same, same velocity until end, the end of the process. Okay, and this is our computation. So, uh, A1, A2, and the time they are in contact. Okay, and if it is the situation with uh, the three agents, so this, this case is, uh, is harder um, because we need to take into account like uh, whether X1, X2 are in contact first or X2 and X2 are in contact first. Uh, so, so I, I will use this TF123 means th th the first time the three agents are in contact, right? And if they are in contact, then I can use uh, their um, one of uh, the nexus reconditions that's, uh, that I derive in theory. So I can get, you know, the connections between A2, A3, A1, and A3 here. So it look like, like, looks like everything can be computed in terms of A3. Okay, and here at the contact time, so TF12 is, is just the, the contact time between agent one and two. Uh, TF123 uh, is just the contact time between agent two and three. Okay, and I, I will at the contact time TF123, so both, all of them are in contact. So I can compute, uh, you know, at a one, two, at a two, three in terms of uh, the control here. Okay, and we have three cases actually. So the first two agents will be uh, in contact first and or the second uh, two agents, uh, like three, two and three will be in contact first and the case three here. So all, all of them will be in contact at the same time. Okay, so for each case then we need to calculate at a one, two, at a two, three differently. Okay, and uh, um, then use, using the new, and then uh, we can compute x, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, it's my typo, I'm sorry, as uh, x bar dot, the velocity of the three agents in terms of the control. And we can compute the contact time um, between one and two and two and three, you know, in, in this way. Okay, and then after that, we can compute uh, the trajectories using the newton Blattner's right and we can compute their cost functional uh, in terms of the control a3 okay uh, and then we propose this algorithm okay so the key point is so how do we know that uh how can we classify their the possibilities here so whether agent one and two are in contact first or two and three are in contact first and you know the conditions this condition number 29 here is very nice here without this one we, we don't know in advance. We cannot verify in advance. But this one is is so. It, I think that is very is extremely useful and uh, help us simplify the calculation a lot. Um, and with with this equation, with this equation, so uh, showing the interactions and like some some interaction informations among the agents, and we can um, we can we can. We can know that, okay, we can determine whether TF12 is less than TF23 or bigger than. So whether they, uh, the first two agents are in contact first or the two, three. Yeah, something like that. So we can just compute this one, lambda is here. Okay, and we we consider three cases. So then we, we know exactly that, uh, well, when the first two agents are, uh, one and two or two and three will be in contact first or they are in contact at the same time. Yeah. And um, so the idea is we try to compute everything in terms of the controls and, uh, and minimize the, the cost functional, which is the quadratic 
function with respect to the control. Yeah, that's that's the idea. Okay, and uh, we can solve the problem analytically, and uh, this is our uh, simulations. So we have uh, we also wrote a Python code based on the algorithm. Then now let's see how it works here. So it is uh, the dest uh, the destination is here, right? And it is the initial positions of uh, three agents. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, let's see the simulations here. So in this case, you can see that's uh, oh one and two first. <laughs> then they will, all of them will have the same of the same velocity, right, until the end of the process. And that is our calculation. Okay, uh, control one, two, and three here, and you can see that the TF one two is 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 less than TF two three here. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, the um, the um, first uh, agent one, agent two will be in contact first. Okay, and two and three will be contact later. And another situation is here. We have uh, the destination and the initial position of uh, three agents. Okay, let's see how it works. Uh, we, we also consider different radios. Okay, then let's see that the simulation. Yeah, you can see. So <clears throat> that is the uh, the case when like two and three, agent two and three will be in contact first. You see, then it is A1, A2, and A3 here. It is cost functional. Yeah. And so uh in and now let's jump to the last section here. Uh so in conclusion, that's uh uh we just uh, formulate some ground motion model. In the form of uh, the scripting process, and and we um, uh, we use the, the nexus three conditions uh, for the dynamic optimization of uh, uh, control ground motion um, try, uh, with uh, uh, multiple agents and obstacles uh, to uh, to solve the problems, but uh, with uh, uh, simple cases. Uh, with more agents, like four or five, maybe it is so hard to, to solve. And maybe uh, if we have such cases, then maybe we try to group, you know, all the age, maybe uh, group agent into different groups, three groups. And we try to reduce the problem of, of many agents to the problem of uh, maybe three agents, something like that. Yeah. And in the future, maybe we can consider the bi-level optimal control problem. Like we can consider all many groups of participants or agents, they try to uh, reach the, the destination in the minimum time. Okay. And each of the group may, maybe we have a leader. Okay. We assign the leader. So the leader will take care of not overlapping with uh, the other groups while avoiding, uh, while heading to the, uh, uh, the destination. And uh, on each, uh, each group, so we have some participants or some followers that just follow the, uh, the uh, uh, the leader and make sure that they will not overlapping each other. Yeah, something like that. So it is considered as our uh, future research. So in next one, I just want to show you some our some recent papers in the IEEE control system letters. And our uh, some papers in uh, in JDA. So I think that's enough. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Kao. So do you have any question for me? <laughs> Anybody questions or comments, please? If not, let's thank our speaker. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kao, and uh, th thanks everyone for, for being here today. And uh, so since this is the last talk, uh, uh, we will see you you know, next semester. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, thank you. And uh, right now it is about, you know, 
12 a.m. in Korea. Yeah. So it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm very glad, you know, to give a talk. Yeah, and thank you so much for it.